I believe in America. America has made my fortune. The film The Godfather, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, is considered by many to be one of the most successful films that has ever been made. The Godfather earned a total of 10 Academy Awards nominations, winning three, including Best Adapted Screenplay for Mario Puzo, Best Actor for Marlon Brando, and the Best Picture of the Year. This video essay will explore the topic of tension formed through editing, sound, and the use of music, focusing on the Italian restaurant scene using supporting analysis from historical and cultural context of the film. The narrative of the film will be considered by examining the background story of each character and their motivations. Thus, the essay will shift to more detailed analysis on the main methods used to create tension as rhythmic editing, mastery of the duration and order of shots, metaphorical sound, use of music, and the use of Italian without subtitles. I'm gonna speak Italian to Mike. I will be constantly referring to Walter Murch books to explain how the multifunctional set of techniques affect a sense of emotion and tension on the audience. To conclude, similar techniques and themes used several times throughout the film will be highlighted. Therefore, this scene represents a good example of identifying the style of the director and the approach to editing. This development will lead to the realisation of Coppola's original approach on generating tension and keeping a great narrative through the scene. The themes of power, tradition, loyalty, integrity and responsibility have all been connected in the iconic masterpiece from the year 1972. It was a golden era of New Hollywood when Paramount Studios became the proud owner of the bestseller manuscript called Mafia, written by Puzo. It was the collaboration between author of the book and the Italian-American director Capola that revolutionised the film industry in the early 70s. The release of The Godfather came during a time when America was experiencing drastic social changes. The film highlights police corruption and the questionable morality of politicians who send their citizens abroad to fight the wars. One of the most iconic protagonists in the film history, Michael Corleone, seems like a heroic outsider battling against the corrupt system. In effect, the tragic hero of a western set in New York City. This was shown nowhere more prominently than in the scene where Michael goes to a meeting with Solozo and McCluskey and executes them. The scene opens at Louis' restaurant, a small Italian restaurant in the Bronx. Michael has been brought here by Solozo and McCluskey because it is a safe public place to meet. Previously, Michael has been told that a gun will be placed in the restroom behind the toilet and at some point he should excuse himself. I have to go to the bath. As the three of them sit down, the tension is created by two questions. Will the innocent character Michael really kill these two men? Will the gun really be planted in the restroom? Michael returns to the table and sits down. Already he has broken one of the rules given to him during the meeting, to come out from the restroom shooting. He sits, and we wonder if he is really going to commit the crime. Here is a quick rundown of the story up to that point. The Corleones, led by Don Vito, are a mafia family. However, the youngest son, Michael, is not part of the family business. He is a World War II hero and has a legal future, but after a rising conflict with rival gangsters, which leads to an assassination attempt on his father, Michael volunteers to kill Solozo and McCluskey during a meeting where the three are there to discuss the current situation. Then I'll kill them both. This is Michael's first involvement in the family business. You're taking this very person. And it is a key moment for Michael in the film. He is willing to sacrifice everything for his family. There is no turning back after such a crime. It's not personal, son. It's strictly business. The Godfather suddenly reveals itself not only as a film about organized crime, but also as a family saga metaphor for capitalism in America. The 70s was a period where directors had more power and prestige to expose the hypocrisy of institutions of power in their films. The story also suggests that when organized business gets big and is not controlled by the government, it becomes corrupt. Don Corleone had all the judges and the politicians in New York, then he must share them. It is a reflection of American fantasy, but also a historical reality. In capitalism, morals were often adjusted to fit the needs of a situation, and that is what we see in The Godfather. I don't want it near schools. I don't want it sold to children. That's an infamia. In my city, we would keep the traffic in the dark, people, to call it. They're animals anyway, so let them lose their souls. When the film was first released, it gave the audience an inside look at the criminal world. 
were not accessible for the average citizens. Audience were also drawn to the idea of an individual who makes his own destiny, not subjected by the rules of the conventional society. These are horrible and dangerous people, yet there is something very attractive and compelling about them that really fascinates the viewer. Furthermore, the attraction is increased by the strong connection and loyalty between members of the Italian family. The new trend of Mafia movies, the importance of the family and the attraction to criminality and evil make the influence of the Godfather incomparable. Michael, the son that Vito was hoping to save, the man with a glowing military record, has crossed over to the dark side. What makes The Godfather so ambitious is the thin border between the true-to-life gloom of Italian-American family and the power of the moral force. I do renounce Tense moments in the film have one thing in common. All of them play with the audience's expectations. They invoke both curiosity and fear by giving a feeling that something horrible or exciting is about to occur Without offering an immediate confirmation, the audience is left with questions and must wait in that state of anticipation. Filmmakers use editing to help create that state of expectation. The mastery of the duration and order of the shots give the filmmaker plenty of opportunities to bring the audience to the edge of their seats. Rhythmic editing refers to the technique in which the shots are assembled to a certain rhythm. Rhythms in general are predictable. When a tempo is introduced, the audience will begin to think what is about to happen. As the rhythm picks up the tempo, the viewer will be more expectant. There's an inbuilt um, relationship between the story itself and how to tell a story and the rhythm with which you tell it. And editing is certainly 70% about rhythm uh, and what you are showing and the rate at which you show it. Consider the scene in which Michael talks to Salonzo. To make it simpler, let's just focus on the duration and order of the shots. Notice the pattern that appears. There is a long take, followed by a short take, followed by a long take, and a short take again. This pattern is used repeatedly in this scene. The duration of the shot varies according to the time needed for the audience to feel the emotion. In this scene, Michael is going to the restroom, we intercut between the two scenes happening simultaneously. One showing Michael looking for a gun in the restroom, and the second one showing the faces of the characters as they wait for Michael to come back. By intercutting those two scenes together, audiences understand psychologically that Michael will be in trouble if he takes any longer. The viewer becomes emotionally connected to the character by hoping he finds it and gets out of the restroom. Eventually, the connection between the events is revealed and the tension is released. Here is the example of the slow shot where tension is built up. The camera stays on Michael and slowly tracks on him. Because the camera is moving closer, we have a feeling that it tries to peer into the man's soul. We start to question Michael's personality. Is he really the man we thought who he was? It then shortly cuts off by a shock shot, which in this instance is Salonzo getting executed. The scene is followed by a reaction cut, which in this instance is Captain McCloskey. The action is concluded by the revelation shot, which is the wide-angled view of the restaurant. That shot acts as a breather after a tense point and lets the audience figure out what has just happened. Another significant aspect of this scene was the use of close-ups at the right moment of time. Close-ups tend to be valuable. If they appear on screen correctly, a very dense atmosphere can be created. Here, for example, we have a long-lasting wide shot of the restaurant. After that, we abruptly cut straight into the close-up of Salonzo. You want your badge. This creates a huge impact on the audience, as there is an obvious motivation for this cut, and the viewer understands that this will shift the story into the new direction. The tension eventually drops down, and the characters begin to speak in English. The composition of camera expresses the change in atmosphere. We moved from this to that. Again, look at which point it happens. I'm not that clever. All I want is a truce. The character confirms that he has good intentions, which releases the heaviness of the conversation. Clearly not for long. I have to go to the bathroom. The reaction shot of Salonzo is on a close-up, which shows the lack of trust between the characters. The Conversation Book by Michael Ondarcha contains a length interview with legendary film and sound editor Walter Murch. 
the two discuss Coppola's approach to the scene, and I will be quoting deliberately from their insightful interview. The crucial choice that Coppola makes with the sound was to create the tension through exaggeration of key sound effects. For that purpose, an unrealistic layer of sound is used to emphasise the feelings visually. The scene begins very quietly. Let's look how the tone of the scene is set up by the very first sound we hear. The pop of the cork being twisted out of a wine bottle. It is an amplified sound, much louder than anything else that we would hear in the restaurant. Therefore, it sets the tone of the scene. On a subconscious level, the audience is being told to listen carefully. As Murch said, it was such a celebration of minor detail at a tense point, deliberately done so the audience would pay attention to a tiny, realistic sound. When Michael is about to leave the restroom, we hear the sound of a subway train passing by. Even though we do not see the train, we accept it as part of the natural environment because the location is set in Bronx. So far, the only two sounds Coppola has chosen to emphasise are the popping of the wine cork and the subway train. Both effects will pay off in the next scene. Once again, we hear the screech of an elevated subway train. The sound is very loud, almost drowning out everything else in the room, which highlights and reflects on Michael's emotional state. Murch explains this choice. It's metaphorical in that the sound of the train is played so abnormally loud that it doesn't match what we're looking at. Objectively, for a sound that loud, the camera should be lying on the train tracks. That's when Michael unexpectedly stands up and shoots Solozo and McCluskey. The pop of the gunshots recalling the pop of the earlier wine cork, almost suggesting that the destiny of these two men was decided already when they first sat in their seats. When Captain McCluskey eats, Solozo and Michael start the conversation in Italian. The film does not provide subtitles for that lengthy dialogue, so the audience has no idea what they are saying. Murch explains to Ondaatje why Coppola made this choice. It is very bold, even today, to have an extended scene between two main characters in an English language film speaking another language with no translation. As a result, you are paying more attention to how things are said and the body language being used, and you are perceiving things in a very different way. You are listening to the sound of the language, not the meaning. By using this technique, Coppola is forcing the audience to watch carefully how things are being spoken through the tone of the voice and the body language which draws the audience deeper into the story. The audience already knows what this meeting is about. Michael and Solozo are trying to reach a truce. What's more important is Michael's emotional and psychological state, because the dialogue is in a foreign language and therefore unimportant. We can focus our attention fully on Pacino's amazing performance. Pacino has to pull off a very difficult act here. He must convince the audience of his nervousness and doubt. The way that Michael glances down, the way that his shoulders slightly drop, the frustration in his eyes when his Italian fails him. Pacino creates a delicate physical performance that brilliantly captures the character's state without giving anything away to the other characters. No more attempts on my father's life. Coppola chooses not to use any music underneath the scene. The music only appears after the murders have been committed. It is a stark contrast to the style of some modern filmmakers. Murch explains why the music does not come until very late in the end of the scene. It is a classic example of the correct use of music, as a collector and channeler of previously created emotion, rather than a device that creates that emotion. Most movies use music the way athletes use steroids. There is no question. You can induce a certain emotion with the music, just like steroids build up a muscle. It gives you an edge, it gives you speed, but it is unhealthy for the organism in the long run. The two men are dead and Michael's position freezes. He does not know what to do next. Previously, he was instructed to drop the gun and calmly walk out. There is a moment when we are again unsure if he will follow the plan, but finally he throws the gun away and leaves the restaurant. Then the operatic music starts. The music is telling us that this idealistic young man has now, out of his own free will, sacrificed his own innocence. Yes, he thinks this will improve the current situation, but in fact, he has taken the first step in destroying his own family. 
This is an incredibly tense scene that brilliantly uses all of the traditional elements of filmmaking in the original fashion. The editing styles and techniques are in fact used several times throughout the film. Let's take a look at some examples. Repetition of the camera move that we saw in the Italian restaurant. Here, Michael first proposes that he should be the one to kill these two men. Here comes the use of Italian without the subtitles. Also, great use of editing in order to create tension. The method of introducing music after key events is repetitively used in The Godfather. Look at this. Action and Nino Rota's big chords kick in. Over here. And here. The Godfather is a film in which tempo, rhythm and sound play the most important role in building up the tension. Suitable techniques allow to expose certain emotions and guide the narrative in an extraordinary way. The fact that a shot's duration takes only a few seconds. The fact that we see a wide angle or a close-up. The fact of whether the scene has music underneath or not has a significant importance. Every decision that a director makes affects the way the narrative is told. In case of The Godfather, a true masterpiece has been created.